Hi guys, it's Ranger Jason Bentley here at the Conference Center at Lagan Outdoor Center. The lesson I'd like to share with you today is about boomerangs, making boomerangs. You see this cool boomerang that I made all by myself? I can do it. I was impressed with the, how this thing flies around and it'll come back to me. So at the end of this, I'm hoping that you can follow the directions, maybe learn a few things and you'll be able to go outside and practice throwing a boomerang that hopefully will come back around and you'll, you'll be able to catch it. And I'm gonna show you some demonstrations in a little bit. But first I wanna share a little bit of information about boomerangs and about the flight, uh, the technology of flight and that sort of thing. But guess who's been flying around for years and years and years? The birds. Birds out there have been flying and that's really where we learn our flight characteristics from. You're gonna hear words like dihedral, angle of attack, camber. Those are all science and flight terminology. So we really have to look up what does that mean, dihedral. Picture a large soaring bird, very large bird, such as a hawk, an eagle, a turkey vulture, very large wingspans, okay? So typically the larger the bird, the larger the wing, less movement they have to do to be able to fly, they soar. Whereas a little tiny bird like a chickadee has to flutter its wings all the time, has to flap, 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 flap to be able to fly. Dihedral is a word that we use to describe the steeper the V of the wings, the more dihedral. The lower your wings when they come down, the less dihedral you have, okay? So a turkey vulture is an excellent example of a bird with very extreme dihedral a V-shape, and I can see that turkey vulture miles away in the sky and know that that is a turkey vulture. But a quick description of that, that's a basic description of dihedral. When we're talking about the aeronautics and the science of flight, dihedral is the angle between the left and the right wings of the aircraft. It's the angle between those wings, okay? It's used to des describe the effect of side slip or rolling of an aircraft. It really means it gives more control to that bird or to that aircraft when it's going into these turns, okay? It's more stability. It cuts into the air a little bit better. It gives you a better angle of attack with that dihedral. So what is angle of attack? Basically the angle of attack, if the wind is coming directly at you and your angle is down or up, that's the difference on your angle of attack. And then camber is another term that you should know from this, camber. What does camber mean when it comes to lift and flying? Because that's what keeps things flying up in the air is lift, the wind lifting underneath it. Air passes faster over the top of a wing, resulting in lower pressure, and camber increases that effect. So therefore, camber wings lift off the ground and get more lift, quicker lift, than a flat wing. The more curvature, the more camber, the more lift that you have, the less camberture, the flatter, the less lift. So some basic explanations of it. Um, I hope I did it justice uh, trying to explain that to you guys. Those are the three scientific terms that you need to know that helps us understand why a boomerang can fly the way that it can why an airplane can fly the way that it can, why a bird can fly the way that it can. So stay tuned, we're gonna walk through each step here and then we're gonna go outside and practice. Welcome back guys, we're gonna get back into the boomerang making process right now. Again, I have my final product here, but I wanna show you the stages to go through to be able to get to this, okay? And what, what materials that you're gonna need. So it's really simple. The first thing you're gonna need is you're gonna need to print off this pattern from the link that I'm gonna share. And this is the worldwide boomerang pattern right here. Okay, you'll need that, you'll need the pattern. The other items that you're gonna need for sure, some tape, some scotch tape. I have to have scissors here because I gotta cut the pattern out. Manila envelope, any old filing manila envelope. These work really good, nice and heavy to use for our wings. And some tongue depressors. Um, popsicle sticks can work too. You gotta adjust the pattern a little bit, but tongue depressors are really good for this. So you tape your pattern down onto your folder. And I usually try to tape it on this direction. 
instead of, uh, as you can see as it's up and down, I tape it on this direction and instead of this direction. Believe it or not, even paper has grain patterns to it just like wood. And it will fly better with the grain turned one way compared to the other. So I'm gonna put it on there this direction and tape it down. And then I am going to use my scissors to cut out my three wings of my boomerang, okay? And as you can see on this pattern, it also has a little scale for measuring on here if you wanna measure it. But the way I'm gonna show you, you really don't need it, okay? So I'm gonna cut three of these out. And I don't need the paper anymore, so I'm gonna keep my scale off to the side just in case I wanna reuse that. But this is basically one of my wings, okay? And I have three of them already cut and set here, ready to go. Okay, we're gonna bend our wing down. So, what we do is we use our popsicle stick to get our wings set where they need to go. All right. Okay, so I have my three uh, pieces that I cut out that are gonna be the wings, and I have my three tongue depressors here, and I have my pattern set down. If you notice, I have a penny taped down into the center of that pattern where the tongue depressors are going to be overlapped with one another. Well, Ranger Jason, why do I have a penny in here? This penny is gonna help with our dihedral. Remember I was telling you about the wings, the V in the wings, the dihedral? This is gonna help give us the proper dihedral if I tape a penny down on there. You can do it without taping a penny down. You're just gonna have to bend your wings into shape to get the proper dihedral the proper angle on there. Okay, so the penny is taped down. I am gonna take one tongue depressor and I'm gonna mark a T on it so I know this is the top. This is the top of the, where I need to hold on to it for throwing. If you notice, my pr finished product already has that T on there. So that's the top. I'm gonna start by laying these out on my pattern. T shaped down facing the penny, okay? and just hold it in place. Now, if you're worried about it moving, you can do something like this and just take a piece of tape and hold it on there in place to keep it from moving. Okay, so I've got my first one set. The next two are gonna get glued together with the hot glue gun, okay? So if you're using a hot glue gun, make sure that you have permission to do so, um, that uh, it's you're not touching the ends. You can also do this with just regular uh, school glue, just like an Elmer's glue, a white glue. It's going to take a lot longer for that to set up and dry than by using a hot glue gun. So that's why I'm using the hot glue gun. It, it goes a lot quicker. So I'm going to glue these two down in order. I'm going to put a glob of, dab of glue here on this one. And you got to move quick because it starts to dry. And then as I set this one down, I'm gonna add more glue on it for the top one. And I'm gonna follow my pattern and I'm gonna set these sticks right along the lines of the pattern and have them all overlapping right in the center, basically right over top of that penny. And then I'm just gonna hold it there for a minute and let it start to set up and dry. Okay, it won't take very long for that to dry. All right, and then I'm gonna push the ends back down towards the table, which is gonna give us our dihedral. That's why we have our penny under there. I'm gonna stick the ends back down there. All right, so while we're allowing that to dry, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna start working on my, my um, wings, my patterns, with an extra tongue depressor, okay? So these pieces that we cut out of our folder, what we wanna do, there's a left-handed way and a right-handed way to make this, depending on which arm you throw with. I'm gonna first show you the right-handed way, and then I'll show you how to set this up if you're a lefty also, okay? It works the same way, just you have to reverse it around a little bit. So we're gonna get our wings bent in shape. My tongue depressor, I'm gonna stick one end up to the end of the tongue depressor, and I'm gonna fold this over basically the width of the tongue depressor, the same width. You can see this line comes down along the same width as my tongue depressor, okay? Now I'm just gonna fold that over and make a crease, okay? Just make a crease on that. 
And I'm gonna do that with all of them. I'm gonna put a piece of tape along here to hold this down, okay? I'm not gonna tape this into place yet. I'm gonna set the tape that this can still pull out, okay? Because that's gonna be the difference between us setting this up left-handed or right-hand. I don't wanna tape this down um, quite yet. But I'm gonna leave it in there for now so I can get these pieces taped down. I find it's easier to use two little pieces instead of one big long piece on here because it doesn't quite hold. It's hard to get one big long piece on here in place the right way. It's a little bit easier to use two shorter pieces. All right, so one's there and I'll overlap another one. And I'm gonna do this with all three pieces, okay? Okay guys, we've got all of our pieces of paper folded over that we're gonna use for the wings on here, okay? And I've taped them down along the edge as you can see, but I've not taped the tongue depressor in solid. That We'll do that later. Again, because we haven't determined if we're gonna make this for right-handed or left-handed yet. All right, so these are still loose, but they are taped over, they're folded over, and they're taped down, okay? We're gonna move back to our pattern here where we have our three taped down. And as you can see, our penny's still underneath there. And we did that to set up for the dihedral. So you wanna have a spin test, okay? This was upside down. This is the top, the T. And we're just gonna have a spin test to see how it spins. And that's spinning pretty good because we have dihedral. As you can see, these ends are slightly bowed up. Okay, so there's dihedral coming up from the center of our body to the top of the tips of the outside of the wings. Okay, so we've got good di dihedral in there. Now we have to determine if we're going to make this for a left-handed or a right-handed thrower. I'm right-handed, so I make all mine to go right-handed, but I'm going to turn one around and show you how to make a left-handed one. Maybe if it's upside down, it's easier for you to see that and to, to understand how that goes on, all right? So for a right-handed thrower, if you have it upside down, the wing is gonna slide onto there to the end and then we would tape that down. That's for a right-handed thrower. For a left-handed thrower, it's gonna go this way. If you can see, that's where our tape seam is and it's gonna come all the way out to the end of the stick and we'll tape it down that way. I tried one with glue, I tried one with tape. To me, the ones with tape seem to work a little bit easier. So I'm just gonna tape these down to the end. And again, you want this uh, tongue depressor popsicle step coming up right to the very end of our wing before it stops. We don't want it sticking out beyond that. We want it right about to the end and I'm gonna fold a piece of tape over there to just hold it in place. And I'm just gonna put a little piece of tape here at the bottom to hold those in place of where they need to be. And there we made the worldwide boomerang pattern. Pretty simple, it only took a few minutes to make it. Let's go outside and I'm gonna teach you some skills on how to throw it. Hey guys, we're outside and we've brought our boomerangs. I have three of them that I've made here. Uh, well, we're gonna try them all out. My first one that I made had a little bit more glue on it, was a little bit heavier. I don't think my dihedral was set just right because it was flying very erratically and it wasn't coming back to me. I also learned that I wasn't holding it the right way and releasing it the right way and trying to throw it the right way. So there is a certain uh, way that's better th than others to throw this. So when you're throwing a boomerang, doesn't matter if you're lefty or righty, I'm gonna, I'll show you the right-handed way first, but um, it's good to have your arm up over your head in this direction. You wanna hold on to the boomerang at the ends of your foils here, at the very end. You see your T for the top, that should be facing you. T's facing you, and you just hold on to one end of them like this, and that's how you throw it. If I was left-handed and I was throwing my boomerang, I would have my T facing me and I'd have it in my left hand but still holding it down here. When you're coming down, you basically just want to bring it 
on a slight angle not straight up and down but not over here all the way sidearm too as you're like you would be throwing a frisbee it's not going to fly properly you want to have your arm out about a one o'clock position if we're looking at a clock and we're using the face of a clock at noon one two three o'clock all the way around if you're right-handed I want to be facing at about a one o'clock position with my arm. If I'm left-handed, I want my arm to be out around 11 o'clock out here. So let's give it a try, see if we can get this thing to fly around into a circle and come back to us, okay? And there it is, came right back. So not too bad. It didn't fly very far, but it did what we wanted to do. That one was a little bit heavier with some glue on it, so it didn't go as far. This is the second one that I made, mostly out of tape, except for the little bit of glue right in the middle. So just a little bit lighter, a little bit different shape. Let's see how this one will fly. Oh, come right back to me. How about that? Hard to see, but let's try it again. Hey, I got it. All right, it works out pretty good. Yeah, science. <laughs> there, it came all the way back to me. Pretty good, a lot of fun. So I hope you guys can have as much fun trying this out on your own as I did making mine. It's a lot of blast. If you got any brothers and sisters, maybe you can teach them how to make one. Again, try to remember all the um, aeronautic terms that went with it, all the terminology our dihedral, our angle of attack, our camber, um, some of the history about the boomerangs. Maybe you can find some more information than I did and be able to share that with your family. Make sure you get permission to get the office supplies out, get your manila envelopes, tongue depressors, use a glue gun, all that sort of thing. And again, if you need help with, with that, don't be afraid to ask one of the adults, okay? Good luck. Let me know how your boomerang turned out. <laughs>